you know that a diode rectifies current it allows current to flow in only one direction whereas a transistor is a current amplifier we'll first look at the basics of a transistor a transistor is made up of three layers of p and n semiconductors you can have a p n p transistor or an n p n transistor now the first terminal this is called the emitter this is the base and this is the collector similarly here this is the emitter the base and the collector now electrodes are connected to each of these layers so we have these three terminals and over here also you have these three terminals so a transistor is called a three terminal device and a junction transistor like this that we are discussing over here is called a bipolar transistor because in this case we have two kinds of charge carriers the electrons and holes so bi means two and polar is refers to the polarity of the charge carriers now let's look at the circuit symbols for the pnp and npn transistors we have a circle and this is the base this will be the emitter and this is the collector now similarly for the npn transistor we have the base the emitter and the collector these are the three terminals in case of a pnp transistor since the emitter is positive we have an arrow drawn from e to v the arrow is drawn in the direction of conventional current so since current flows from positive to negative we have an arrow which is drawn from e to v in case of an npn transistor since the base is positive and the emitter is negative we have an arrow which is drawn in this direction see just note that that in the circuit symbol the arrow is not drawn between the base and the collector but it is always shown between the emitter and the base now let's take a look at the current flow in these transistors see batteries are connected to the pnp transistor and to the npn transistor so that this emitter base junction is forward biased and the base collector junction is reverse biased now you might have noticed that this base region is common in both the cases and this is called the common base configuration because the base is common to the input circuit and to the output circuit see so you might have noticed that we've shown the base as a thin region and apart from being thin this is very lightly doped now this is something extremely important and you'll see how does this affect the flow of current so this is a very important trick that we've done over here we've kept the base region very thin and lightly doped now let's take a look at the polarities since we want this junction to be forward bias we'll connect the positive end of the battery to this end and the negative end to the n side this junction is reverse bias so we have the negative end of the battery connected to the p side and the positive terminal is connected here similarly in this case since the emitter base junction has to be forward biased the negative end of the battery is connected to the n side and the positive end is connected to the other side and since the base collector junction is going to be reverse biased we have the positive end of the battery at this side and the negative end at the other side using the circuit symbol for the transistor let's just show the same connections this junction is forward biased so this is connected the positive terminal is connected to the p side and this junction is reverse biased so we have the negative terminal over here connected to the p side similarly we can draw the connections for the npn transistor this is once again this was forward biased and this is 
reverse biased. Now we'll take a look at the flow of current. See, if you look at the PNP transistor, the majority carriers over here are holes. So, since this is forward bias, the holes tend to cross over and move into the base region. But the thing is that the base is very thin and lightly doped. Most of the holes tend to move over into the collector region because they are drawn by the negative end of this battery. Similarly, if you look at the electrons, the electrons are the majority carriers in this n-type semiconductor. The electrons will tend to cross this junction between the emitter and the base since this is forward biased because they are being pushed from this side by the negative terminal of this battery. So they will tend to move into the base region. But you can see that the base is very thin and it is also very lightly doped which means most of the electrons are going to cross over into the collector region because they are being pulled by the positive terminal of the collector region. So now by Kirchhoff's rule, we can say that the emitter current is equal to the base current plus the collector current. So we have an emitter current which originates over here. Some current flows into the base because some of the holes will combine with electrons in the N region which are present over here and these electrons are balanced by a flow of electrons into the base region. So you have electrons which will flow into the base region as a result of which you have a current in this direction which flows in the base circuit. Most of the holes are reaching into the collector region so we have a collector current. So the emitter current is equal to the base current plus the collector current. Just to give you an idea of these values, say you have an emitter current of 1 milliampere, then the base current will be about say 0 0.02 milliamperes and the, and the collector current will be about 0.98 milliamperes. So you can see that the emitter current is practically equal to the collector current with a very small base current. This equation will hold in both the cases whether it is a PNP transistor or it is an NPN transistor. Now let us just draw the arrows showing the same currents in this case. In case of a PNP transistor you can see that you have an arrow which, which is drawn from the emitter to the base. So this would be the current in the wire. Now you can see that the current which flows into the circle, so we'll have the base current and the collector current both will flow out of the circle. So the base current would be in this direction and the collector current would be in this direction. If you take a look at this circle over here, you have an emitter current which is from the base to the emitter. So you have an emitter current which flows out in this direction. So once again, if you look at this circle, you have a current which flows out of it. So you'll have an equal amount of current which goes into the circle. So you have the base current in this direction and the collector current in this direction into the circle. Now try and answer this question. Electrons are more speedy carriers than holes. So for a high frequency or for a computer circuit where you need a very quick response, Will we prefer an NPN or a PNP transistor? You guessed it right. For a high frequency circuit, we would prefer an NPN transistor. In case of an NPN transistor, the electrons are the majority charge carriers. <clears throat> Whereas in case of a PNP transistor, the holes are the majority charge carriers. So for, very, for a very short response time, we would prefer an NPN transistor. Thank you.